what's up guys and thank you for watching this video i hope that you are going to enjoy it if you are new to the channel welcome to the channel uh, if you're someone that has been following me i will say welcome back today i have a pretty special video it's all about this little guy uh, this is my custom build nano long range and uh, this thing has a pretty neat setup i'm going to show you how i got everything set up on this video thank you for watching guys and i hope that you are going to enjoy it Now, before I get to what making this setup pretty special, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of cover all the components I use for this build. We're gonna start with the frame, of course. The frame I'm using is the Beta FPV frame. Uh, this one is the HX115 frame. They're actually making those. You can actually buy uh, the HX115 for about 120. Now with my current setup, I believe everything I use on this drone, the total price of the total drone came up to about 160. But trust me guys, this is a much better setup than the one Beta FPV are selling you, bird and fly. If you wanna buy it, I'll put a link to the drone so you can go buy it. I think that one is better than the 120s, but this is much better. And of course, there is nothing better than building your own drone. So frame HX115 for beta fly, beta FPV, sorry about that guys. Uh, very nice frame. The one thing I love about this frame is that it's all carbon. There is no plastic anywhere on this frame. Everything is carbon. Uh, it pretty much look like any of the freestyle frame that we are used to. Uh, the bottom plate is only two millimeter thick. And the top plate, I don't know if you'll be able to see that that is about 1.5 millimeter thick so it's pretty thin but the overall build weight is pretty much nothing so i don't see anybody breaking this frame okay let me go back i'm pretty sure someone may end up breaking it but the likelihood of you breaking this frame is very 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 minimal i would say this frame should be able to survive mostly any crashes on grass specifically and I'm pretty sure you can survive some crashes if you hit it against a wall or against, against a pole. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, from there, we're gonna talk to the motor, talk about the motor. Uh, the motor I'm using, those are the robot motor. They are 1202 by five. And the KV is 1100 KV, no, 11,000 KV motors. Very nice motor, very tiny motor. Those are the smallest motor that I haven't seen. But again, I'm not a nano guys. I don't really like to build a small drone. Uh, this was just a special case because I had something in mind and I wanted to test it out. But those models actually look very nice. They run pretty smooth. And from the model, we're gonna talk about the prop that I'm using. Let me actually take those guy out. Those are press on props. Come on, come out. Uh, that's why they are uh, tiny little props and those are actually let's see what are they they are gem fan hurricane durable two props and they are 30 by 18 and the little hole in the middle is 1.5 millimeter you do have some hole on the side and that is if you like to use two millimeter screws to attach your prop to the motor but really i don't think you need to do that because they press on and they're actually staying in there that's uh, pretty surprising to me i didn't think they would be that good but they're actually staying in there and i'm not also using the screw because i don't want my i don't want to end up bending my shaft in the case of a crash uh with just press on if i crash into something the pop more likely either to break or just come off the motor so i may end up saving the motors now let's go in the inside of the drone I'm gonna start with the receiver because right now what I have is my Express LRS 2.4 receiver and this one is the 
J H E M C U receiver. That is, of course, another express LRS 2.4 receiver. And we got that small little antenna. Uh, great receiver. I posted video about those type of receiver. You can actually go up to three kilometers with those with receiver with no issues. Actually, I think on my videos, I went up to three miles. So that should give you all the range you need. And of course, you can see as a nano, I don't have a GPS on this guy because I don't really need it. I don't, I'm not expecting to set, uh, fail safe with this receiver. From the receiver, we're going to go to the flight controller. And this is a AIO flight controller. This is the Darwin FPV. Has both the flight controller and the ESC all together. And I think this ESC are 15, 15 amperated ESCs. That should be pretty enough for this little build. And on top of that, you got the VTX. And uh, this is a Zeus, 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 I can, I can say it. Zeus VTX, 350 milliwatt VTX, plenty of power for this little frame. The one good thing about this VTX, I believe you can go up to one miles, um, one miles or one kilometer in an open field. But I know with my receiver, I will be able to add on my VTX, which is the one thing that matters the most. And as far as camera goes, we do have a little Cadex Ant Nano. That seems to be the primary camera for most of the Nano build or Nano band and fly available on the market. A uh, very good camera for the price is very cheap and the image is actually pretty good. I uh, actually do enjoy the image. And uh, that is pretty much everything you have on this drone. Uh, the build wasn't that much difficult, but I would say it's a little challenging because of all the little parts, uh, all the little soldering parts. So if you someone who's not very comfortable soldering, I would stay kind of stay away from this build because you may end up burning something or bridging something. Now, let's go to the part that's making this setup pretty special. Is that I have this drone set up to where you could run it on either a 18650 cell or on a 2S battery. And this 18650 I'm using is the Sony, and that is the VCT6. Uh, it is 3000 amp very nice batteries and with this setup the only thing i have to do is yeah red on this side do not back uh do not put those things on reverse or you're gonna burn your electronics so what i did i got the red on this side to match with the red on the back there you go it is set up very nice batteries and this is what i use for what i'll call the long range mode with this battery i am actually getting about close to 18 minutes of flight time i'm actually able to run this battery down to 2.7 but i don't try to go to 2.7 because when i go to 2.7 that's when the whole drone just fell out of the sky it got actually kind of burned out so i've been running it down to 2.8 and the good thing is i'm getting 18, 18 minutes of flying and that is primarily just cruising around nothing crazy just some cruising you know slow flights i'm getting 18 minutes now if i want to push a little bit to go a little faster really really going faster i would say i'm getting 12 minute flight time on this little battery that is very nice nothing uh, and that is very nice and of course 12 minutes to 18 minutes so if you just want to, something to just fly around something to explore you can use this setup with the 18650 and that is pretty much what i've been using i'm not really big into uh long range flying i'm mostly into endurance flying which is the longer flight the better and i've been using this guy to just explore around my house i've been going into the wood i've been going to place like i would never think about going with my seven inch or five inch or even my three inch drone so very nice it is pretty small it can pretty much squeeze everywhere you want to and the vtx to be a 350 milliwatt vtx i have to say this vtx actually does do pretty good work i have taken it to one of the local park and i have flown it as far as 500 meter away from me and the VTX was still working pretty fine. I didn't have any uh, crazy breakup on my video. 
and that is pretty amazing since i'm using a linear antenna you think that with a linear antenna uh transmission from the vtx won't be that good but i took it up to 500 meter away from me and i can say that i'm pretty confident i can go up to one kilometer with the vtx with not any problem now the other mode of this build is of course the 2s mode and i have my xt60 set up in the bottom and that is one of the good thing about this uh aio flag controller from darwin fpv is that they do give you two spots where you can connect your lead for your battery and let me see if i can show you that on top you got this guy and this guy yes guy i used two black wire for my xt60 so you can connect it on top and in the bottom right and here you got the red that's what i used to connect my 18650 battery and you got the black on this side so you got two spots to connect your battery so i'm taking advantage of both of them one thing i, I had to warn you guys if you're going to be using this setup make sure to not run both battery in the same time because with the setup the way i got everything connected those battery are pretty much running in parallel and one of the big thing about running battery in parallel is that you have to make sure you're running the same number of cell so if i if you if i end up connecting this one cell with this two cell one one of them is going to end up catching fire and more likely i'm going to end up burning everything as far as electronic goes so talking about running this guy on a freestyle mode that's what i'm calling it with the 2s it does actually do pretty okay as far as freestyle go but you gotta remember guys this is a pretty light build the total weight with the 18650 is about one 111 gram and the total weight with the 2s battery it's about 98 gram yes guy you heard me 98 gram and the reason is because the 2s actually much louder than the 18650 18650 battery uh freestyle wise fly pretty okay for its size it's very light i mean if there is any kind of wind right the wind gonna push your drone away but except for that you can pretty much do everything you can do on the on a bigger quad it does not fly like a five inch drone so that's pretty much it doesn't it's not close to a five inch drone but i've been flying around i've been pretty much doing all my tricks i usually do you know we're talking about power uh, uh power loop split s pretty much everything i do on my five inch drone i can do it on this little drone actually i'm doing a little more on this little drone because it's so small i know i'm not gonna break it so i'm taking more chances with this little drone but overall it does fly great not great it does fly good as a freestyle drone but the way the place it really shine is as a long range that's pretty much what it's built for so as a long range drone perfect you get plenty of fly time and that's pretty much all i have to say about this guy though i don't want to make a big deal out of it but i just want to bring it up to your attention if you're thinking about building this guy i put oh i put the list with everything i use for this build and just remember you can run it both as a 1860 long range drone or as a 2s freestyle drone thank you guys for watching this video i hope that you enjoyed and i will see you on the next one